Welcome to the Game Dungeon. This episode we're going to be doing everything different compared to a lot of other episodes. We're covering a super mainstream game that's not that old. And on top of that, this is actually a fan request. Because I've gotten a lot of emails saying, Ross, please review Wolfenstein. Well, today your wish is granted because that's what we're going to be covering. Wolfenstein is a first person shooter. If you didn't know that, you must be new to the world of video games. It's okay. Now, I did some research, and chronologically, this game is a sequel to Wolfenstein 3D. It is not a direct sequel to Return to Castle Wolfenstein, which apparently was a prequel to Wolfenstein 3D, which, of course, was, I think, a reboot of Castle Wolfenstein and Beyond Castle Wolfenstein. Confused yet? Well, this is a game about shooting Nazis. That's all you really need to know. So let's get started. So the game starts off and our intrepid hero, BJ Blaskowitz, is aboard a German warship kicking ass as usual. Oh, and it's worth noting that BJ has apparently dyed his hair again. Since in Wolfenstein 3D, his hair was red, but in Return to Castle Wolfenstein, his hair became brown. And now I think it's flat out black. And I haven't played it, but from what I've seen of the Wolfenstein game after this, he settled on sort of a blonde. Anyway, we have some good action going on here, but then after escaping from multiple shots fired, he swings around to the other part of the boat, then just decides to take his time to slowly get into a fist fight. Look, he even puts on a cocky smirk. Like he's completely forgotten that he's alerted the entire ship and needs to get out of there as soon as possible. No, let's just take our sweet time. Now watch as he overacts like this is a stupid sitcom. Body language is important, people. I'm not sure the animators understood what Blaskowitz is all about. So it looks like the game's over before it's begun, but then he pulls out a medallion and... Whoa, that's handy. Holy shit. So this medallion has the powers of the bullet stop from Matrix Reloaded and can skeletize Nazis like the Ark of the Covenant. Yes, BJ, don't show a look of amazement. Don't show a look of relief. Show your stupid fucking smirk again. Because remember, this is a sitcom. I realize I'm griping about this an awful lot, but one of my pet peeves is showing unrealistic human behavior. No matter how fantastic your world is, people are still people. So if our protagonist is behaving like a poorly written cartoon, that's not a great sign. But let's give this the benefit of the doubt. Sometimes cinematics like this are done by different people than the rest of the developers. So after our boat intro, we get a briefing that there's another medallion like this out in the wild, and BJ needs to follow up a lead on it. I do find it kind of funny that both the superior officer, who obviously works at a desk, and his orderly both have big football player builds. Like, I don't know what this organization even does, but you're not getting in it unless you also qualify for heavyweight boxing. So besides that, we find out Himmler's paranormal trooper division is up to their old tricks, so we'll need to be on guard. And with that, we begin the game. Well, it looks all right so far. I like the lighting. And here is my contact. I'm Vizikar Salserka. Come with me. Your cover is already blown here. Of course my cover is blown. Like there was any doubt whatsoever I was going to have to shoot my way out of this situation. All right, one of the first things I notice about this game is the aiming feels floaty. It's not that bad, but everything feels a little loose. This isn't that big a deal for this game, but I find it kind of amazing that we're still having problems with mouse aiming. I mean, Quake 1, as in 1996 Quake, had great mouse aiming. But here we are in 2009, still trying to figure it out. Also, I noticed the sensitivity on the horizontal plane is much higher than the vertical one. In theory, this makes it easier to hit enemies, but in practice, it makes the game harder if they're on higher ground or beneath you. It would have been nice for them to just give us the option to tweak that individually, but that's just me with my old school way of thinking. So we get escorted down some sewers, and this is just a guess on my part, but I think this is the developer wanting to show off that they have good water effects. Woohoo! Check out the water, everybody! We got water! Water for days! 
Water is traditionally a real pain in the ass to look good in 3D, so I think they just wanted to show off. I also discover a secret. One cool thing about this game is the secrets you find have some payoff. Later on, you use money you find to mod weapons. I like this. It's a little bit of RPG flavor without having to go headlong. All right, I have a question for everybody, but especially to any Germans or people who have lived in Germany. What do you think of this guy's accent? Agent Blaskowitz, I'm Eric Engel. I work with the Kreisau Circle. Listen, we don't have long. There are Nazis fanning out through the station. Does that sound like a native-born German freedom fighter to you? To me, it sounds a little too sterile. But I'd like to get a second opinion. Anyway, we'll come back to this. Just be thinking about these accents anytime you hear someone speak. Grab some weapons from this table and fall in. Okay, so we have a gun, but nope, not time to shoot yet. Turns out besides gold, you can find intelligence reports as well. I have to say though, while I like this concept, I listened to dozens of these and I don't remember a single one that was funny or interesting. They're all really mundane. Like, be sure to have your men double check the lock to the warehouse door because I saw your patrol skip a check last night. Okay, who cares? This was a high profile game. If you're going to write something down to have hundreds of thousands of players discover and listen to it, maybe you should have something to say. All right, enough of this crap. We're done reading and sneaking around. I'm BJ fucking Blaskowitz. Light him up. The combat's good. I like it. Enemies go down with a couple shots, have good physics and animations, and the headshots are particularly satisfying. Honestly, I don't know what it is, but these headshots are some of the best I've seen. Now, the guns don't seem powerful because there's not much recoil and the gunshot volume isn't very loud, but they are powerful. You can cut Nazis up good with these. Now, some of you will laugh at this, but this is actually the first game I played with regenerating health and no health meter. I mean, I have played games with regenerating shields before, but I never played a straight up shooter where you don't have a visible health meter and it all comes back automatically. When I first played this, I was getting nervous because I thought, that guy shot me, how much health did I lose? Why won't the game tell me? I didn't realize that I had all my health back once the screen became clear again because it was such a foreign concept to me at the time. I think it works when it's done right. I mean, it's no less realistic than finding health packs. I mean, except for some hardcore military games, the entire first person shooter genre depends on you being able to heal up instantly after being shot. Does it quite work that way in reality? Now, it doesn't take long before I realize this game is trying to teach me something. And that is, it wants me to walk, not run. Maybe it's not so bad watching this video, but running in this game gives me a headache. It likes to bob the camera back and forth. Boo buddy doo da bleh. So I'm not going to be doing lots of quick movements and impressive maneuvers in this video. I am going to be playing this game like I am carrying a machine gun tripod and 80 pounds worth of troop gear on my back. Unless there's a live grenade next to me, I'm not going to be running much. You don't even run that fast either. This game does not want you to run. So my brothers in arms keep taking down these Nazis, but at one point the leader has something important to tell me. DJ, we need you defending us with the MG42. What? Did you say something? DJ, we need you defending us with the MG42. I I didn't catch that. What? BJ, we need you defending us with the MG42. Okay, I heard BJ. I didn't catch the rest of it. BJ, we need you defending us with the MG42. Oh, the gun. You want me to use it? BJ, man the machine gun and take out the incoming... Yeah, gun. yeah. You don't have to tell me twice. And as I feared, this mouse sensitivity is a problem. It takes so much effort to aim up to hit the guys on the catwalk. So I gun some more Nazis, then decide I'm not causing enough trouble, so I bomb a railway car. Whoa, don't see that every day. So this continues off and on. I get some zero-G fighting in. The Nazis aren't very good at it. And that's the level, pretty much. Okay, now listen to this part of the report afterwards. We carried some unusual munitions that canceled gravity when it detonated. Everything floated to the ceiling. 
His tone here is, huh, that's a little weird. Now, I realize BJ isn't a scientist, but I would expect even a soldier to recognize that never in the history of anything have we ever been able to just turn off gravity like that. I know I'm expecting too much of this game, but come on, they're giving me this fantastic visual display that bends reality, and all the protagonist says is, huh. Now, it would be one thing if the game was trying to be corny and tongue-in-cheek, but it doesn't quite go there. Instead, the dialogue's just sort of bad. Next, we start wandering through the town hub to meet the local resistance. Again, I like the lighting in this game. I've seen some people complain about the graphics, but I don't have any issues with them. When I first played this, however, it was impossible to enable anti-aliasing for this game. I remember that pissed me off, but now that we're in the future, I'm able to strong arm it and it makes the game look much cleaner. So yeah, this game gets a thumbs up from me on graphics. Well, most of the time anyway. Now most of the game is linear except for this town hub area. Unfortunately, this town is kind of a maze. And as you may know, I am not a fan of mazes in first person shooters. They do give you a map, but everything kind of looks the same. So I finally meet the resistance and now let's talk about the voice acting. Here is Caroline Becker, the leader of the resistance. Agent Blaskovitz, the Kreisau Circle thanks you for your assistance at the train station, but we can't help you here. We're busy as it is freeing Eisenstadt. Boy, does she sound like a native born German or what? To me, this is obviously an American woman trying to sound like a German. And it is. The voice actress was born in Tennessee. Maybe I'm being too picky here, but this is Wolfenstein. The whole damn game is set in Germany. Hey, here's a crazy idea. What if we were to get some actual English-speaking Germans to do the voices of, I don't know, the Germans? Now, I realize the developing company is located in Wisconsin, so traveling to Germany probably wasn't in the cards. But maybe they could have contacted a studio in Germany and had online recording sessions with the director. No, screw that. Let's get a bunch of American Hollywood actors instead because that's all we know how to do, right? Hey, riddle me this. Why do so many big budget games feel like they need to hire Hollywood actors? That's a good use of your money, right? Especially since you can't see their faces in the vast majority of video games. I mean, unless the actor has a really distinctive voice, I'd rather hear some no-name actors who are going to give it their best and have the movie star money go towards fixing bugs or more content instead. And this game was cutting corners, too. You can hear the same voice actor on three different characters in a row. It's good to see someone finally strike back against General Zeta. We've already had several civilians join the Kreisau Circle because of your victory. What in the world could the Nazis be building at the church? Caroline says you're here to spy on General Zeta. I've seen his eyes. That man is pure evil. Yeah, that's some great casting right there. Anyway, we next head out to an archaeological dig site where the Germans have discovered another one of those medallions. Well, that last one looked like it was enough to end the war in Europe, so we better intercept this one. Okay, now I'm sure there are plenty of other examples besides this, but I can't remember the last time I saw a game copy another one this much. This level wants to be the Doom 3 expansion, Resurrection of Evil, so badly. Let's go down the list. We have an archaeological dig site set inside a cavern with floodlights and explosive barrels all over the place. Check. We have the ruins of an ancient unknown civilization that has weird runes and alien looking sculptures all over the place. Check. We have a mysterious powerful artifact that can be upgraded to have four distinct abilities that you have to obtain by defeating bosses throughout the game. Abilities which include slowing down time, more powerful attacks, and protection from enemies. Check. A series of traps designed by the ancient civilization that you need the time slowing function from your newly acquired artifact in order to get through. Check. Nazis. Check. Some giant portal that you don't get to go through until much later. Check. Wow. I'm impressed, Wolfenstein. You are not holding back. 
Really, this whole game is extremely derivative. I lost track of the influences. We have some Indiana Jones, Prey. Somebody could write a paper on the number of things this game borrows from others. It's an analyst playground. So yeah, we get a magical artifact that lets us see into the veil, an alternate reality beneath our own. Definitely reminds me of some Lovecraft concepts here, and it looks like Soul Reaver. Both of these games love their teal, huh? Boy, in gaming, companies have decided if you're gonna show the spirit world, it better be teal. I don't know how many games I've seen this in. Soul Reaver, Titan Quest, Immortal Throne. I think I saw a screenshot of it in Darksiders, maybe in World of Warcraft, I forget. But yeah, hope you like teal. Okay, I know I'm in the minority opinion here, but I don't really want all these extra abilities. I mean, we're basically talking about magic now. I never really like mixing magic with guns and explosives, because to me, guns are kind of like a superpower already. You squeeze a trigger and some guy is gushing blood. Magic. You get an assault rifle in this game. Unless I have to fight a tank or a mech or something, that's good. That's all I need. Adding magic on top of guns and explosives feels like adding syrup and honey and sprinkles and powdered sugar and more ice cream on top of your ice cream sandwich. For me, that's too much. Just give me some bullets. Damn straight. And if that's not enough, I feel like the game is working against itself. Because in general, the lighting in this game is great. So instead of scenic, war-torn Europe, more teal. Teal in your face. All the time, teal. The rest of the color spectrum could go to hell. It ruins the pretty good art direction and discouraged me from using the ability except when I had to. So anyway, now I'm Super Medallion Man. I come back to town and shoot some more Nazis and get another assignment. Also, I run out of ammo for my assault rifle, which makes me sad, but then I realize I've been overthinking the combat in this game. I've been playing on Hurt Me Plenty with aim assistance off. So I've been approaching these fights semi-conservatively, like I don't want to be shot. But I really should have just been spraying everywhere like I'm in an 80s action movie. It works! You know, I was railing on the writing and voice acting earlier, but there was one part here I loved. At one point, I check in on the secret society where one member helped me get the medallion earlier, and I can hear a superior talking to him. I cannot believe you would be so foolhardy, giving a strange American the Naxon crystal. I understand your objection, but from what I've heard, he may be our only hope in fighting off the Nazis. Uh, all right. You did as well as I'd expect for someone so young. Man, I love that. It's just a quick line, but his voice conveys everything. I sympathize with him. It's like he's saying, I don't blame you, I blame myself. I should have known better for ever thinking you wouldn't fuck everything up. This is the price we pay for my optimism. I've been there. Look at this thing. Now there is a desk ornament. They should have sold models of this for a special edition or something. So after that, I do some side mission that has no real substance at all. I should mention this AI isn't very good but it can be kind of hilarious since there are Nazis running at me all the time. Sometimes it almost feels like the Nazi equivalent of the Keystone Cops. But then on the flip side, you have a few guys that will be so dangerous, they really wake you up. I have to admit, this part of the game almost made me jump. Whoa! Somebody's got an express package from the Fuhrer for me. So after a lot more town wandering, I go on a mission to the church because there's a giant teal beam shooting out of it. That's probably not normal. Wow, good thing that didn't hurt me any. I guess that's the limitation of scripted sequences. Hey, I found an invisible wall. Ah, okay, I discovered the reinforcement spawn. That breaks the immersion somewhat, but if the developers didn't want me finding that, then they shouldn't have been hiding gold in every little crevice in the game. These are both in the same building. Despite looking cool, this is my least favorite area so far. Just because all the wreckage makes it hard to figure out where to go. I can't say that bombed out towns aren't realistic, but I don't think realism was this game's priority. It's worth mentioning, this is another game I've never completed before. I remember not looking forward to this level in particular. At one point, the game was bugged and it told me I needed to go to a specific location when really I needed to go to a different area in order to trigger the event. 
don't get me wrong, this isn't a bad game, but I kept finding myself returning to that phrase. Yeah, it's not bad, which feels weird when you say that over and over about something. Like, this gameplay isn't bad, but it's not great. The visuals, I think, are pretty good. Like, look at this area. This is gorgeous. But this is only when we're not looking at mundane, drab interiors. So, again, not bad. The music. Most of it is pretty throwaway, but there's one or two tracks that stand out a little more. Is that the Ark of the Covenant theme I hear? So, the music is not bad. There are some things that are bad, though. Like, I got so sick of hearing the Nazis shout corny dialogue. Hands up! Grenade! One especially. That man is a spy! I must have heard this 50 times. Oh. That man is a spy! 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 Oh. Okay, first of all, I think I'm probably the most wanted person in town at this point, if not all of Germany. I'm acting like a commando, not a spy. Second, Wolfenstein. If you're going to repeat the same phrases over and over again, you don't have any problems ripping off other games. How about ripping off fear? They repeat the same phrases, but they make sense and don't get so old. He's trying to flank. Left side. I'm hit. Fall back. You know, stuff you might hear in any battle. Third, I feel this is so obvious, yet here I am talking about it. How about having Nazis that speak in German? I'd like to re-emphasize, this game takes place in Germany. Actually, I think I know why. I think none of the voice actors even know any German. But we've already talked about that. So I defeat some possessed SS officer, then it's back to more town wander. I don't actually hate the town backtracking, since the combat is still kind of fun. It's just getting a little old. It kind of breaks the immersion when the exact same areas keep being repopulated for the exact same battles over and over. It's not a big deal, but it's not helping things any. Next we head to a countryside level. This is my favorite one in the game. I realize it probably wasn't on the table in terms of game design. But I would have loved to have half the game wandering across the German countryside full of more open space tactical battles like this. See, this is great. While you're in a farmhouse, a truck full of Nazis roll up and there's 50 different ways you can handle this situation. I really think the game should have had more levels like this. Ah! Unfortunately, it doesn't last long, and you soon discover there's a giant secret base leading directly beneath the farmhouse. This looks awesome. But for reasons I'm not even sure of, the game started feeling like a slog at this point. This is the level I originally gave up on in the game. I'm not sure exactly why. I mean, this base area looks amazing, but I think maybe it's because they kept leading me through these snaking, boring corridors. Anyway, I kept pushing ahead, and it's mostly a bunch of stuff I've already seen in a lot of other first-person shooters, but just doesn't have the same punch. I mean, it's not like there are other games where you enter a facility full of escaping mutants which blows up and starts filling with water while you have to backtrack all the way out again. Ooh, wait. So the destruction is pretty impressive, but something about this game just isn't driving me to keep going. Okay, I think it's time I finally address the elephant in the room, and that's the name. Wolfenstein. Look, I'm not stupid. I know all those requests were really for Wolfenstein 3D, and they just said Wolfenstein for short. But this just goes to prove a point that this is a horrible name for a franchise sequel. I mean, here are all the Wolfenstein games currently known. There's probably going to be more. I mean, this is a successful franchise, and it's not like there was any shortage of fighting during World War II. Technically, this is the seventh game in the series. 
why the hell would you just name it Wolfenstein? Now, this is not the worst offender. I think Prince of Persia might have even outdone them, where they had a reboot of successful games going with clear distinguishing titles. Then, bam, name the next one Prince of Persia, even though it's not a remake of the original. There was an awful lot of this crap going on around this time. I think that games might have been trying to copy Hollywood, like they know what they're doing. Now, I'm cynical, and I have a theory as to why this happened. My theory is that this is the equivalent of marketing steroids, because they take a well-known game like Wolfenstein 3D or Sonic the Hedgehog, and they think, hey, this name is all over the internet. If we just name our new, different game after the original, we'll get maximum publicity. Never mind the fact that this is a series, and there will likely be games after this, and this will only cause confusion. No, we're going to market this game like there will never be another one made. Because we live in the present and never think about the past or the future. I think this is the result of marketers who do not give a flying shit about the game they're marketing. Somebody tell me I'm wrong. This makes it a real pain in the ass trying to look up information on this game, too. It's a disgrace because it's so obvious what the real title should have been called. This is Wolfenstein Black Sun. That's what this alternate dimension is called? They must say the name 50 times? It's what the whole plot is about. I mean, I think they would have liked that better than my other suggestions. Okay, I'm worked up over this, so let's finish complaining about the marketing. Look at this game's cover. Yes, it's not awful, but this looks so uninspired. Okay, a close-up of a ghostly skeleton Nazi. They're giving me zero context with this. I can make this cover just by taking a screenshot and zooming in. Let's compare this with Wolfenstein 3D, shall we? Now here is a game cover. This is an America Fuck Yeah game cover. I'm not even gonna analyze this. This cover says everything. So, back to the game. After blowing up the Nazi base, I head back into town and go through the same battles again. Honestly, this reminds me of a play rehearsal. We're both going through the same battles at the same roadblocks, and we're just sort of in a groove with it by now. Not really thinking about it too much. You might think this would be pissing me off, but no, not at all. I have to be emotionally invested in a game in order to get angry with it. And that's a real problem for me with Wolfenstein. I have to tell you, I was really ready to give up at this point. It wasn't obvious from the start at all, but this feeling was creeping in that made me not care about the game. Coming back to the base does not help. Your latest success has really impressed everyone here. Some agents have even asked if they could go on missions with you. <laughs> but Caroline won't let them. I don't think she completely trusts you yet, but she will soon. Oh, she doesn't trust me yet, huh? Wow, this is some great writing. I'm BJ Blazkowicz. I've killed 300 fucking Nazis in this game alone. That's not good enough for her? Hey, this is the sequel to Wolfenstein 3D. Did you tell her I killed Hitler? I killed Adolf fucking Hitler? I put a bullet in his head as he was facing me down with twin chain guns. What does she want? Does she need me to kill two Hitlers? In fact, what's going on here? Who's in charge now? Hey game, could you at least give us a sentence as to what's happening with the war now that Hitler's dead? I mean, that's kind of a big deal. So I push forward some more, now into the hospital. It's a bunch more copy-paste corridors. Oh boy. But wait, I also get invisible assassins to deal with. Yeah, this is great. Don't you love it when you have invisible enemies in a game? Everybody loves that, right? You know, even bland corridors like this don't have to make the game bad. I've mentioned it already, but once again, look at Fear. It's full of dull looking hallways, but that game is so damn visceral. Weapons feel powerful as hell, plaster dust and chunks of the wall fly off everywhere. It completely transforms the environment. Wolfenstein doesn't really have that. Now we get to the level boss, and it's essentially the monster from Sin without his little buddy riding up top. I managed to kill him and get a nice cutscene showing the Black Sun dimension. It looks pretty cool, although I'm tired of them smearing teal green over everything. In fact, I hate to say it, but I'm tired of this game. 
I knew this was going to happen in an episode eventually, but I'm sorry. I'm giving up on this game. It just feels so not worth it. I looked it up and I'm only halfway through. I wasn't entirely sure why, but this game just gave me no motivation to keep playing it. This is such a weird disconnect for me because looking at the evidence, this game should be pretty good. We have good combat, nice visuals, Geigerish statues, an alternate Lovecraft dimension, giant secret bases, Nazis everywhere. This should be a pretty awesome game, shouldn't it? On paper, it sounds great, but emotionally, I just don't even care what happens next. In fact, I bet I know what happens. The game told us we have a mole, so somebody's going to betray us. I'm sure a named character will die, maybe multiple ones. The rebel base will likely get raided, and I'll kill every named Nazi mentioned so far, except Himmler. The end. See, this is why I play a lot of unpredictable games. You never know what you'll get. But this is a relatively polished game. I don't think there are going to be big surprises. This game does have moments that are a lot of fun. Look at this. Boom! That was fucking awesome! But the problem is, these are literally moments. They're gone almost immediately. The entire rest of the time, I kept thinking, maybe I should do something else. Get some work done, go outside. No! That is the worst possible reaction a game should evoke from its players. It's better to have players pissed off at your game than to have them completely uninvested. A good game makes you want to play it so much that it creates real problems in your life because you keep stealing time from elsewhere to play more of it. Those are the best games. Wolfenstein made me wonder if I'm just getting jaded because I was really trying to like it. But I looked up some reviews and I'm not the only one who felt this way. A toothless and insipid platitude so bland as to be essentially meaningless. Damn. And it wasn't just the reviewers. I read they didn't sell nearly as many copies as they hoped to. So I know how I feel about playing this game, but I was really struggling to figure out why. Like, is this game that much different than other first-person shooters? I played through all of Return to Castle Wolfenstein and don't remember the same kind of disappointment. Was it just me being younger? I mean, this has better gameplay than a lot of other shooters I played that didn't leave me feeling so unmotivated. I've thought about this a long time, and I think I may have figured out why Wolfenstein causes gaming on Wii. First, the gameplay is only okay, because if the gameplay was really good, I think that would make up for almost all the other flaws. Second, except for that Russian, none of the characters really seem to give a shit about anything, and in turn, the game doesn't really make me care about anything. You can have big gameplay flaws, bad writing, but if the game really cares about it, then that could be enough to carry you through. That never happened here. Bland, disinterested characters and voice acting combined with a story that the game itself doesn't seem to care about is just death. They should have made the Nazis more brutal. I mean, they were. Make the resistance sound like their lives are all on the line. You have to at least pretend your game is awesome. After all, if the game doesn't care about what's happening, why should the players? Finally, this could be the biggest factor that separates it from older shooters. The game reminds you it's a game way too much. When I play games, I like to get lost in the world that I'm in. Well, every time I get a fourth wall breaking reminder, that partially destroys the illusion. Hey, you're wounded, take cover. Follow me! Man Danger. the machine gun! The machine gun Press R to reload! Checkpoint! Saving game! Characters with the same voice! He's a spy! Follow the compass! Here's your objective! The game is tripping over itself to tell me, No! You're not really in 1940s Germany, Ross! This is just a game! Everything is already planned out, so we're gonna need you to press this button. Can you do that for us? All this stuff adds up and my subconscious mind knew something was off because there were constant reminders this wasn't real. Despite looking a lot worse, you didn't have all these reminders in a lot of older shooters. For some games, this stuff doesn't matter, but for others, like Wolfenstein, I think it breaks it. Okay, awards time. Anti-Gestalt. This game is somehow less than the sum of its parts. 
by every individual metric, it should be a good game. But taken together, something's gone. Soulless. Not enough people on the development team gave a shit about this game, and it shows. And the final award? Best Headshots. I am not kidding. These are some of the most satisfying ones I've ever seen. So that's Wolfenstein, Black Sun. Or as much as I'm gonna play of it anyway. I'll have to come up with something spicier next time. And remember, we need you defending us with the MG40.